So a lot of you were asking if the Qualcomm Snapdragon 690 processor on the OnePlus Nord N10 5G was any good. Let's answer that question. Hey guys, Tita James here. Thank you once again for joining me as we take awesome out of the box. Now you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. We're doing a gaming review for the OnePlus Nord N10 5G. So yeah, there were a few doubters about the performance of this device and I figured what better way to show off its muscle than by playing some of your and my favorite games available on the Google Play Store. Like all gaming reviews we've done in the past, let's kick things off by giving you a recap of the key specs for the Nord N10 5G. Of course, we already mentioned the processor this device has under the hood, which is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 690 processor, and it's paired with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of expandable storage. To give you guys an idea of its number crunching capabilities, we ran some benchmarks and compared it to Snapdragon 700 series equipped phones. And as you can see on screen, it can hold its own against phones with Snapdragon 720 and 750 processors. We've also done gaming reviews for some of the phones that we compared the N10 5G to. So if you want to see more of our gaming reviews, there should be a link somewhere on screen that will take you to that playlist. Now moving on to the next key feature of the Nord N10 5G, which is its 6.49 inch display at full HD plus resolution. It uses an IPS panel at a refresh rate of 90 Hertz. And honestly, there's only two downsides I can think of with the display of this device. One being its overall brightness that isn't suited for outdoor use here in the Philippines or at least when it's really bright out. But then again, we all are trying to stay home as much as we can anyway. The second one is that it doesn't support HD videos on Netflix, which is only a big deal breaker if you watch a ton of Netflix shows on your phone. Aside from that, if you're watching YouTube videos, the picture quality was quite nice. And if you're browsing through your social media feeds, it's quite enjoyable. It's pretty much the standard fanfare to expect when you're using an IPS display. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about in this recap is the battery for the Nord N10 5G, which is at 4,300 milliamp hours and it supports the company's dash charge at 30 watts. Now, I haven't run our standard YouTube loop test to see how long it will drain the battery, but with a display at 90 hertz, this lasted me a full day, and that's with me working mostly on the phone and running a couple of errands outside. I also haven't time to see how long it will take to charge the phone from 0 to 100, but I did do a quick test, and 15 minutes brought me from 54% all the way to 80, so that's pretty fast. All right, so that's pretty much it for the recap. Two things before we continue. Number one, sub to the channel if you haven't already. Don't be shy, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell while you're at it. Be a part of the family. Number two is we wanna say thank you to the folks over at GameBench for helping us make these gaming reviews possible. There's a link down below that will take you to their website if you wanna check them out. Without further ado, let's get to the games and the first game we're gonna be trying out on the Nord N10 5G is Asphalt 9. So this game, no matter how simple the gameplay is, has always been a staple for most of our gaming reviews because the graphics are pretty solid. But I do have to remind you guys that it is locked to 30 FPS. So that's the maximum that we can get with the metrics that you're about to see. I'm also playing this at high quality settings. So let's check out a bit more gameplay footage before we get to the actual numbers. And for the most part, the gameplay was pretty smooth and the only noticeable dips that we saw were when the tracks loaded up for the very first time. And if you haven't played Asphalt 9, the tracks are about a maximum of three minutes long and things tend to get pretty busy. Now, if we look at the results, we'll see that the Nord N10 5G manages an average of 29 frames per second at 83% stability. So we're seeing little dips here and there, but nothing game breaking. I did notice a hiccup or two, but again, it's nothing really huge. I think it's time to move on from Asphalt 9 to what is personally my go-to game, which is NBA 2K20. For this game, I have all the settings maxed out to see how the Nord N10 5G would handle it. And I guess let's start with the metrics for this one. This device got an average of 50 frames per second at 97% stability, which isn't too bad at all. You're generally getting the same results for phones within the same price range. Now, if we look at the gameplay, I was able to record things run pretty smoothly when the shot clock is winding down. And I'm guessing the dips that were recorded by GameBench has to do more with the transitions into timeouts, replays, and when the refs make a call. The lowest that we saw the frame rate go down was 46 frames per second while the game was going on. 
and that result definitely isn't too bad. So if you're like me, who enjoys playing NBA 2K20 during your breaks, you'll be pretty happy with its performance with the N10 5G. But if you want to get even smoother gameplay, you can still bump down things like reflections, the crowd, and the sidelines. Moving on to the next game, let's take a look at some Call of Duty Mobile. For COD, I had the graphic quality on high and the frame rate at max with depth of field, anti-aliasing, and the rest of the option turned on to really tap the system as much as I could. Even then, the Nord N10 5G managed an average FPS of 59 frames per second at 99% stability, so nearly perfect scores there, and the gameplay footage does back it up. Now I think it's pretty much a given that I'm not really good at this game and I tend to play more team deathmatch because the rounds are shorter so it's perfect for those little breaks in between all the work we have to do. And I know that battle royale mode might be more taxing on the system but you can always lower the settings a bit and still have no trouble getting some kills. Overall I think the N10 did fantastic with COD. Now let's take a look at League of Legends Wild Rift. For this one, we had all the settings at the ultra high definition preset, so that's pretty much maxed out with 60 FPS enabled. Fair warning, I'm not good at this game, but at least we know that Wild Rift runs like a charm on the Nord N10 5G. We got perfect marks for this MOBA, so that's an average of 60 frames per second at 100% stability. So if this game is your jam, you can be very confident that your experience will be very good on this mid-range device. Now, I wasn't able to record any big team clashes, but I didn't experience any dips even though I couldn't understand what was going on on screen. Definitely a good sign for this one, not so much for me. And for those of you who are playing Mobile Legends, you can expect the Nord N10 5G to have similar performance with that title as well. I just prefer Wild Rift because I think it looks prettier. For the last game on the list, let's take a look at Genshin Impact. For this title, I was running on the default setting, which is at low, at just 30 FPS, because when I tried to push it to 60, I did notice some frame rate drops right away, so I bumped it down since this game is notoriously taxing on most smartphones anyway. And as you know, I don't really play this game all too much. I mean, all the enemies that you'll be seeing on screen is level two or three for a reason. So I honestly don't know how good of an indication these metrics will represent. But the Nord N10 5G did manage an average of 30 frames per second at 95% stability. Again, this isn't representative of what the game will be like at higher levels since I don't know how crazy it gets. So you might wanna check out other sources if playing Genshin Impact is high on your list. Okay, so what do I think about the performance of the OnePlus Nord N10 5G and the Qualcomm Snapdragon 690 processor? Now, based on the numbers that we saw and what I experienced, I'm generally happy with this phone. Again, NBA 2K20 and Wild Rift ran relatively smoothly, and those are the two games that I end up playing most of the time. Again, I just have to remind you guys, I'm not much of a mobile gamer. I tend to game in shorter spurts and don't have prolonged gaming sessions. And I do have to mention one thing and bring this to light. If you're gonna be charging the phone and playing at the same time, you are gonna get a high temperature warning. So I think if you're gonna be running out of juice, put the phone down, let it charge. Again, dash charge 30 watts. It'll take very quickly to get this phone topped up. You know, get some work done, maybe do your homework or read a book, do something offline. Again, take that opportunity to do something else than mobile gaming. That sounds like such Tito advice. And I think that's pretty much it for this gaming review for the OnePlus Nord N10 5G. The full review should be up on the website really soon. So if you're planning to buy this device, make sure you check it out and hopefully we help you to see if this device is right for you. With that, thank you so much for dropping by and spending a few minutes with me. I really appreciate it. I know I say that all the time, but I do. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, sub to the channel, and hit that notification bell if you haven't yet. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and I'll try my best to get to them as soon as I can. For all the latest in tech, head to unbox.ph+, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our Lazada feed. All the links will be down below. My name is Tito James. Peace, God bless. See you guys next time, and stay safe.